Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 31 to 35. So first, I'll show you guys a question so you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Now let's go through the questions together. So in question, question 31, we're asked which of the following is not a function of the parasympathetic nervous system. So not a function of the parasympathetic nervous system. So for this, you just need to know what the parasympathetic nervous system does. And this is the rest and digest part of the autonomic nervous system. And so it is responsible for constricting, constricting the pupils, whereas the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight system, that one is responsible for dilating them. B, bladder contraction, yes. The parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for this as well. So when you contract your bladder muscles, that means that you're allowed to urinate. And this is something which does occur under rest and digest situations. Whereas if you're in fight or flight situations, you do not do this. C, slowing the heart rate. Yes, the parasympathetic nervous system does this. And then finally, it's just D, which is decreasing peristalsis is what is what does not happen in the parasympathetic nervous system. So like urinating and then digesting things and then also like getting rid of food from the intestines as well. All of that is part of the parasympathetic nervous system, but the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight one, this is the one which decreases peristalsis because it doesn't want you focusing energy on digesting food because you have more important things like fighting for your life. And the parasympathetic nervous system, on the other hand, would be responsible for increasing peristalsis, meaning increasing movement in the intestines and then increasing digestion. So this is the opposite of what the parasympathetic nervous system would do. So it's the correct answer for question 31. In 32, it says a researcher crosses a heterozygous dominant yellow plant with a homozygous recessive red plant. In the next generation, 653 plants were yellow. Which of the following answers is an approximate prediction for the number of red plants in the same ge generation as the one which had 653 yellow plants. So first of all, we had a heterozygous dominant yellow plant and then homozygous recessive red. Let's just use like Y, for example, as the allele. And then if we have heterozygous dominant, so Y and then that's a smaller y. So we have the dominant allele and then the recessive allele. So we have a heterozygous one. And then since the dominant one is going to be present, it's going to make the plant yellow if it's present. That's This is the heterozygous dominant plant. And then the other one is the homozygous recessive plant. So it has two copies of the recessive allele. And then when we, when we cross them over in our Punnett square, the answers that we get or the resulting offspring that we get look like this. So those are the offspring. Half of them are going to be heterozygous and the other half are going to be homozygous recessive, which means that half of them, if they're heterozygous, they're gonna have the yellow phenotype. And since we were told that we get 653 yellow plants, that means that this is half of the offspring that we got from the two parent plants. Therefore, the other half have to be have to be red and we're asked in the question how many red plants do we get? So the other half are red. So if it's a half to half ratio, if it's a one to one ratio, that means that if we got 653 yellow plants, we also got 653 red plants. So C is the correct answer to this to this question. In question 33, it says, in general, steroid molecules can be expected to traverse the cellular membrane via what type of transport or diffusion? Well, steroid molecules across the cellular membrane. The, the plasma membrane is usually, it's, it has both hydrophilic and hydrophobic parts to it. And then things which can go through the plasma membrane, they're either very small or they're largely hydrophobic because the the inner and the outer leaflet of the plasma membrane is mainly hydrophobic. So there's a it's a largely hydrophobic membrane, and so something has to be pretty hydrophobic to get through this membrane. And steroid molecules they do happen to be completely hydrophobic. They might have some small polar groups on them, but 
in general, the molecule is mainly hydrophobic, and because of this, it's going to be able to passively diffuse through the plasma membranes, which means that it can just go through the plasma membrane. It doesn't need any enzyme or channel to assist it going through, and it just goes down its concentration gradient. So it's not active transport. You don't need to go against the concentration gradient. It's not facilitated diffusion because that would be if we had a channel, but we don't need a channel because a steroid molecule can just easily go through the plasma membrane itself instead of needing a channel. And then it's not some type of ion exchange either because steroid molecules, well, they're not ions. We're not talking about charged particles. We're talking about steroid molecules. They're not charged and they can just easily go through the plasma membrane. Question 34 is asking which of the following is true regarding anabolic reactions. So true regarding anabolic reactions. So anabolic reactions, you should know that they build up and then catabolic reactions these so build up and then these well they break down so metabolism consists of anabolic reactions and catabolic ones and then anabolic ones were asked what what what, what is true regarding them and you should know that there are processes in the body which build up molecules and so the correct answer here would be D. They involve the synthesis of biomolecules. C is incorrect because that would be catabolic reactions. And then these reactions, there are a number of different types and they can be for different molecules such as glucose or fats or a number of other molecules in the body. And so it really differs and depends on the type of reaction we're talking about, the type of molecule we're, ta we're talking about. So it may or may not require oxygen. So if we want something to be true about generally anabolic reactions, D is the best answer, which we know for sure is true about anabolic reactions, and then A or B may or may not be true. So D is the best answer here. In question 35, it says the five prime cap is attached onto mRNA strands in the nucleus to help prevent their degradation in the cytosol. Which of the following would be expected from a cell with a deficient five prime cap attachment mechanism? So you should know that the five prime cap is added to mRNA to prevent degradation. Also, you should know that it happens in the nucleus. Now we have a deficient five prime cap. So when we can't add something to mRNA, which prevents their degradation in the cytosol, then what can we expect to happen? Option A is saying mitochondrial protein translation would be unaffected, and that is true. That, so that's our answer here. We're told that this is a mechanism which exists in the nucleus, and so it's responsible. this is like related to transcription and translation that takes place in nu nucleus DNA, but the mitochondria is separate. It does have its own DNA, but it has separate mechanisms for replicating this DNA and also transcription and translation of its genes. So just because a mechanism is deficient in the nucleus doesn't mean that it's going to affect the mitochondria in any way because it uses its own mechanisms and enzymes. So yeah, we can pretty confidently say the mitochondrial protein translation would be unaffected unless there's also something wrong with the enzymes in the mitochondria as well. But we have no information saying that. Option B is saying overall transcription rate of the cell would be unaffected. That's incorrect. It would not be unaffected. If anything, it would be increased because when you have transcription going on, the product of that is mRNA. But now if mRNA is being made and then it goes into the cytosol and it's not protected, then it, it's going to be degraded in the cytosol and the cell is going to notice that because it wants to transcribe a gene and then create the product of that, the protein product, but it's not seeing that product being formed and so it's actually going to upregulate transcription to counteract this problem. And so we can't say that transcription of the cell would be unaffected, it would actually be upregulated. C is saying overall total protein in the cell would increase. Likely it's, uh, it's going to decrease because mRNA is being degraded, and so the ribosome can't really get to it in time and translate the mRNA and then give us the, the protein product that results. And so it's likely that protein in the cell would actually decrease rather than increase. And then finally, option D is saying the cell would be unable to defend itself against viral infections. So this is kind of a random answer. There's no clear link between DNA transcription and translation and viral infection. There's nothing saying that we are 
missing specifically like the genes that are required for viral infection. If anything, you're going to see a number of different problems, not just specifically about viral infection. So we can't confidently say anything about viral infections, but A, we can confidently say that the mitochondria, since it's independent, it's probably going to be unaffected by problems with the nucleus. That's it for the videos in this. That's it for the questions in this video. And if you liked what you saw, make sure to check out our course on teachable.com. The link is in the description below. And other than that, make sure to subscribe to this channel because we're going to keep uploading more videos which have similar things to this. So more questions and then we go through the answers. And that's also what you'll find in our course. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.